I ascend the highest mountain is the mountain of the Lord by the blood, by the word, by the spirit. I ascend the highest mountain it's the mountain of the Lord by the blood, by the word, by the spirit. I ascend the highest mountain. It's the mountain of the Lord by the blood, by the word, by the spirit. Oh my goodness. I have ascended a mountain. It could only be by special grace of God and by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of God, and by the power of the Holy Spirit that moves and lives and has its being in me. And I thank my God very much for that. And yes, I am doing this ministration from that mountain. And it's the part three of the <clears throat> what I had started to um, Saturdays ago, right? This reflection series. Are you ready for spiritual enlightenment? And I explained in part one what enlightenment is, spiritual enlightenment is, and how it is not something to be dreaded and something to be shunned as being for um, people who are in sex and everything like that. No, it's in the Bible, it's in the Word. So it is something that we children of God should covet. And when we covet something of God, we don't do it once and stop. We do it continually. Like the uh, Apostle Joshua Selman says, he's a perpetual student of life, and that's who I am. He's always seeking knowledge. Because the Bible says, seek and you will find. It doesn't say how many times you should seek. So we have to be always seeking knowledge, listening to all those messages, listening to all those songs, you know, attending whatever functions we can attend. I'm on a, I'm on, I'm on a one day retreat and I just had to come. In short, I had already engaged myself. And so losing my cousin was not going to stop me from coming. I'll be going right back after this. So I'm just so grateful that I ascended this mountain in spite of everything. That's why I sing that song. So, Father God, I thank you so much because you've made it possible for me to ascend this high mountain. It is your mountain, Lord, and you told me you were coming with me. There was nothing to fear. This was my prophetic prayer for yesterday. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 14. And once I read this, I knew, Lord, there was nothing to fear, nothing at all. It is well, as people say, it was well, it shall be well. Thank you so much, Father. And today you remind us, indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Luke chapter 12, verse 7. Holy Spirit, the more we get to understand, understand what you are revealing to us in your word and then we step into that i thank you so much for that father god and so i just ask you holy spirit to have your way have your way bless us bless mama bless everybody in this household bless this whole program you alone know what you are working on in my life i thank you so much for everything bless my sister for me oh father i just give you all the glory in the mighty name of jesus so tribe there are many um scriptural passages that had been given to me and i i got it all and i put it there and today in particular because i'm not in my base so i don't have my laptop i don't have all of those things i'm just going to look at two or three of them but I'm going to encourage us as usual to go and study them because that's the word of God. I didn't add or subtract nothing from that. I just went and googled copy paste. Because when we talk about undiluted word of God, we mean that you don't add nothing to it. You don't subtract nothing from it. So that is what I, I do. 
I, I study the word. I don't add nothing. I don't subtract nothing. I pray for interpretation. I pray for understanding. I pray for guidance and everything. But I don't add nothing to it. I don't say maybe and all of those kind of things. Well, and all. I just pray to God. So the very first passage I'll be looking at is um, Luke chapter um, 1, verse 76 to 79. I honestly didn't know Luke chapter 1 was this long. Is it chapter 1 or chapter 7? I can't see very well what I wrote. But let's go, right? Verse 76 to 79. Oh my goodness. Okay. <clears throat> A new child will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our god whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace so one reason why we seek to be enlightened and so that we can be the light the bible tells us scripture tells us we are the light of the world we are the salt of the earth so how would you even know you are light and what kind of light and what power does your light have because there's some light you put on it doesn't even brighten up the whole place but some light you put it on there's no way you can ignore that light you know a small bulb like that but it shines so bright so it's only by seeking this enlightenment and you do this by as Ascending this high mountain, you are ascend by the blood of the Lamb, invoking the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, doing it in his mighty name. And you ascend by the word of God. You study it every day. You, 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 you participate in a chapter a day. You study it on your own, your other Bible. You go over and over and over again. You will always be learning something new. And of course, by the sweet fellowship with the spirit the spirit of god not any kind of spirit right not marine spirit and all of those things because it is already said you child the, the bible is is it, even if it was written at that time luke, luke was talking about jesus but because we are all his children or we have all given our lives to him as believers then we claim it for ourselves so each and every one of us can become any of those things a prophet an apostle an evangelist whether you are even called any of those things the fact is that once you give your life to him you are no more ordinary and so you have to always set yourself aside you belong to a royal priesthood so you have to be very conscious of how you live you have to be very sensitive of course there'll be things in your life that will seem very foolish to the world and that is why in Romans 12 verse 2, we are encouraged to not conform to the things of this world, but to renew our minds constantly. How do you renew your mind? You study the word. You fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You say, Spirit, speak to me. Okay, Father, speak to me. Okay, Father, lead me. Father, show me you are with me in this. Father, are we going together? Because if you are not coming with me, me, I'm not going to no. Now, the next um, passage I would like to read is from Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 to 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 to 6. I'm so happy to be doing this where I am doing this because it was a wish of mine. I didn't want to do this elsewhere. And um, I'm not going to be back before Saturday is over. So let me do it now. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 to 6. For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened. This is why it should, you, if you are seeking enlightenment, be very careful. Because it is once you have been enlightened, it is now impossible for you who has tested the heavenly gifts and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tested the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then fall away to just be restored again to repentance 
it is going to be very challenging. That is why grace abounds. It's, we, should be, we, should, we should consider ourselves so blessed that we have this sufficient grace. But just so you know, you might one day be counting on this grace abound, grace abound. And before you want to start praying to, to the Father, the client call. The trumpet has sounded. So that is why we are really exhorted to be very careful. Once we start being enlightened, once we start tasting of the heavenly gift, once we start sharing in the Holy Spirit and its gifts and its fruits are manifesting in us, once we taste of the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the ages to come, we should be very prayerful not to fall. So when we even just see ourselves trembling, we should be very quick to say, Papa, I beg, help me. Help me, I need my balance back. I need my balance back. Because if we think that we will just fall and then be restored back to repentance, we are actually crucifying once again the Son of God to our own harm and holding him up to contempt. Is that fair? Who, 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 which of us can just willingly open our hands and say, crucify me, nail me on the cross? Come on, even just give our lives up for our bread and life. Sometimes we would think and think and think on it. Not to talk of dying that kind of death. So we need to be very careful, very mindful. If we are seeking spiritual enlightenment, not the kind of, you know, those people in the world, Illuminati and doing those things to have those their things. No. The ways of the... I remember I even said as a Christian, just know that once you get to a certain level, that's why you see people like those apostles, some of them, the serious ones, you know them. Nobody needs to tell you that this one is serious, this one is yeah, yeah. They will tell you that they, 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 I even I. There are some things that I know I cannot do. I've given up and I cannot. If I dare me myself, I know the trouble I'm calling upon myself. Another person can, who is still lukewarm, that dilly darling, they can fool around anyhow. But once I get, I've gotten to the level where I've gotten to, I know that Father, I beg you. I beg you, Papa. I don't even want me temptation. I don't even want a high hello before I don't answer. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. I ascend the highest mountain. It's the mountain of the Lord by the blood, by the word, by the spirit. Oh my goodness, all these songs from Pastor Victoria Orenze. I listen to them, they speak to me, and I just want to sing them all the time. Like that one, she says, I. Um, I'm made for more. Don't you dare hold me back. I'm made for more. You need to understand. I carry God. I know stopping me now. I'm taking nations. And then the second verse, ever so powerful. I'm made for more, more than what eyes can see. I'm made for more, supernatural things. I carry God. I know stopping me now. I'm taking nations. Okay, First Corinthians chapter two, verse eleven. Oh, before I go to verse 11, this verse, somebody uh, uh, prophesied this to me, saying, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, is what God has prepared for me. Wow. I was like, Father, this is heavy. Oh. Okay, well, who am I to refuse? Verse 11, for who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person? So you cannot deceive yourself because you, the spirit that's in you, knows your thoughts. So which spirit lives in you? Only you know. People can be sitting there on the first bench in church, but only they know the spirit that's in them. And people can be walking around and they know the spirit that's in them. 
which is in him. So also, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So now it's about spirit. So when we talk of spiritual enlightenment, which you want to be enlightened according to the means, the ways of work of which spirit? That's why I put Christian. Because if it's the spirit of Christ, the spirit, the Godhead spirit, the third, you know, the, the third person in, in, in the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, then good for you. Be, they just know that you cannot embarrass the spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. So be very careful. I like to use this term when I talk with my sister, I say why I let slap. <laughs> And uh, we understand each other. And uh, I'm sure other servants of God and people of God who are really serious about seeking him know what I mean by wireless slap. The time when your own things will be frustrated, stored, but other people's own, they will be fooling around, their things will still be working. Because to whom more is given, more is expected. So don't seek for more if you cannot also hold yourself up to the standard of those who receive more. That's why sometimes we cry a lot. Because the more we receive, the more is expected from us. The more we realize we have to give up more. And the more, of course, the world will not understand us. And the more there's going to be trials and tribulations and slandering and all kinds of false things about you. Because, of course, you cannot be understood. And you'll be like, what do you want to show? Okay. I'm going to stop here for today because, as I said, I'm not in my base and everything. I don't want to spend my whole time. I don't have forever yet, you know, doing this. But I had to do it because I put my hand on the plow and I do it every Saturday. So I'm so grateful that I'm a, I am able to do this. And I really wish that somebody gets something from the three series to really be determined about their search for spiritual enlightenment, which is also awakening, which is also further understanding. You know and things like that okay help us father god thank you so much i really give you all the glory i thank you for everything you know it's all and i know that it is still going to work out just so well on the way back and so ah papa yes i really do believe that i am made for more thank you so much for everything father god i bless your holy name Thank you, Papa. Thank you for all. Thank you for Mama. Thank you for Princess. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Papa. And I know that all is well back home too. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much. Holy Spirit, you are such a companion, such a comforter. Thank you for everything. In your mighty and precious name, I pray, Jesus. Amen. Stay blessed, everyone. Uh, weekly devotions, right? Morning and evening on weekdays, Monday to Fridays, and ministrations on Friday, on Saturdays, yes. And then my sister does a chapter a day every day. That is Monday to Sunday, 3:30 um, p.m. Cameroon time. So if you can join, you can uh, Princess Clinton, and um, you can just search for her on Google, and then she also uh, puts it on her YouTube channel a chapter a day that's the name of the youtube channel yeah the spirit is going to lead you if you really want to find it you will be led god bless us all